Greetings folks. In this video I'm going to be having a look at the Matec GNSS SAM M10Q uh, GPS module uh, that we can use on flight control boards to give us return to home, uh, waypoints, um, cruise modes and all those sorts of things. Wonderful little units. There it is there. Tiny little thing. I have previously reviewed the M8Q, the SAM M8Q from Matec. Great little GPS unit, or GNSS unit, I should say. Uh, so this is the upgraded version with the M10 chip instead of the M8 chip. So what's the difference? Bit of background with GNSS modules. Uh, so GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite System. Uh, we all call them GPS, but that's only the US version of the GNSS satellite systems. Uh, there are four different systems around the world. There's GPS, which is the US, GLONASS, which is Russia, Galileo, which is Europe, and Beidou, which is China. The M8Q can use three of those systems, GPS, GLONASS, and Galileo. So if those satellites are visible in your sky space, then uh, should be able to pick up those satellites. The M10Q can pick up all four systems, so including the Chinese Beidou. So uh, depending on where you are on the planet, uh, there's a possibility you could get more satellites. GPS sensors come in all different shapes and sizes. There's uh, another Maytag one, that's the CAN bus one, which actually does have uh, an M8Q on it. Uh, there's the little Batian BN220, very, very small and cheap, but uh, pretty slow picking up satellites. There's the M8Q with compass on board. Uh, this M10Q SAM doesn't have a built-in compass, so only use, useful for fixed wing or somewhere where you don't need um, magnetometer. Uh, and there's a, a Neo M9N. They're the first ones I ever bought, and they work very well still. There's a something or other, I don't know what that is, from a, a Begoli uh, flight control board. Uh, that's the inside of the M8N. But anyway, you can see lots of different shapes and sizes. The M10Q is very, very small, compact, and works very well. So in the packet, all we get really is a little bit of heat shrink, uh, the cable there, uh, and the little unit itself. Uh, comes double-ended with a JST-SH, some sort of cable uh, plug. Uh, I would clip that off and solder on my own four-pin or two two-pin uh, DuPont connectors so that I can connect it into my flight control board, but I'll show you all of that and I'll show you the full setup in iNav as well. Over on the Banggood website, uh, that price may be different. There should be a discount code in the description if you read down below the video. Dimensions 25 millimeters by 16 millimeters by 8 millimeters, exactly the same as the M8Q. No magnetic compass built in. Input voltage to 9 volts on the 5 volt pad. There's also a 3.3 volt pad as well if you want to power it from 3.3 volts. UART board rate 9600. The flight control board will automatically set that so you never usually have to set that in INAV or anything like that. UART connection so RX and TX connecting to the TX and RX on the UART of your choice. It's a JST GH4P connector 1.27 millimeter pitch and the likelihood of us ever having a flight control board that that would plug into directly is pretty low, so I always have to solder up my own cables anyway. Uh, and the LEDs, it's green when it's powered on and it starts blinking when it gets a 3D fix. Weight 7.5 grams, and they even get a 3D print file here if you want to mock up one. Here's a close-up of it, and there's the antenna, and you can see these little scratches you often see on GPS antennas, and that is not damaged. That actually is for fine-tuning of the antenna, so that's not a bad thing. And there is also a setup program called uh, U-Center, I think, but it's uh, Windows only, and you, you usually don't need to change anything. The flight control board sort of takes care of whatever changes it needs, needs to make. Now you can go over to the UBlocks website and download the spec sheet for the M10 and the M8 modules if you're interested in a little bit more detailed information. The supply power to the actual chip is 2.7 to 3.6, but uh, 
But Maytech add uh, a voltage regulator to uh, allow, f what is it, 4 to 9 volts, and it gets regulated down to the uh, 2.7 to 3.6 uh, or 3.3 volts that is required. More fascinating information there if uh, you're into that sort of stuff. Okay, so now I will solder up my cable and connect it to a flight control board and see how long it takes to acquire satellites out in my backyard. And it's usually it's a pretty bad reception area out in my backyard. It, it, it often takes ages just to get five or six satellites. So we'll see how we go with the, the M10Q. All right, I've soldered up a cable for pin to pond. I'll plug that into UART2 on this board. That's what I'll select for GPS. Just those set of pins there. Plug it in. Got a solid light there, so that shows it's connected. Hasn't got a 3D lock yet, and it won't in the inside my house there, here. Connect to INAV. Got a blue icon up there, so that shows that it is already working properly, but I'll, I'll go through how we do it. First, we go to ports. Select a UART for the GPS to be connected to. I'm selecting UART2 and you just select GPS from the list of sensors. Save and reboot that. Then go to configuration and make sure you turn on G GPS for navigation and telemetry. If you do this before you've set up the port, uh, then it won't stick that, that uh, setting. So port first, then GPS for navigation and telemetry second. Save and reboot that again. Then plug it in. You may have to plug a battery in depending on your flight control board. This one gets power from the USB connection, so I don't need to plug a battery in at this stage. Then go to GPS. Scroll down to total messages, and if that is counting, you know it is connected properly and it's searching for satellites. And also, if it's connected correctly, you will get that blue icon. The GPS will be blue instead of red. If it's red, all you have to do really is switch the RX and TX pins, maybe you've got them around the wrong way, and make sure you've plugged the actual unit into the UART that you've selected for GPS. And that is pretty much it. So what I'm going to do now is go out um, and acquire some satellites and I'll compare the M10Q to the M8Q and uh, this, what is it, it's a Neo M9N. Both of these has, have been fired up and acquired satellites before, so they may be faster, although they both haven't been used for quite a while. So we'll see anyway. And once they've all sort of acquired satellites in this area once, the next time you connect it up, it'll be much, much quicker. So I'm going to attempt a practical demonstration of the GPS. Um, I'm sitting here in the car. The weather's pretty horrible, so I can't really do it on a plane away from trees and all that sort of stuff. Flight control board, uh, have the GPS plugged in there and it should get satellites through the windscreen, hopefully. I'm going to try a couple of different satellites, uh, just see how long it takes to acquire satellites and it'll show up on the screen of my um, X14S running Ethos. I have a timer there as well, so I can check that out. Uh, so, it's this is of no real scientific value or information value. It's just sort of personal interest to see how long um, and brand new s GPS systems takes to acquire satellites. And these ones have been uh, used before, so they're possibly going to be a lot quicker uh, because they have to download all the initial information to start off with. But anyway, let's just try it. I will power up the board. We should get some information on there timer going and it should show me how many satellites we get eventually and how long it takes. I'm sitting here uh, because we're getting some whales showing up in this area here so I thought I might as well sit here and uh, watch for whales at the same time. Setup is going to be a bit dodgy here but anyway we'll see what happens. Oh there we go we've got six satellites already so that's enough to arm the board. That took a minute. Seven satellites now. Well, that's a surprise. I thought it would take a lot longer than that. Let's just keep going and see how many satellites we can acquire. Eight. This is the X14S FreeSky Twin Protocol. Uh, I have an uh, Express LRS module in the back there, so we're running Express LRS on Ethos. To nine satellites. 
10. Oh, it's going well. All right. Well, that might do it for the moment. I'll swap over to the other ones and see how we go. All right. Let's power down. <clears throat> Pull out the M10Q, plug in the M8Q, and let's go again. Powering up now. Telemetry should start appearing. This is now the SAM M8Q. There we've got five satellites, put, should put six satellites in a minute. That's pretty similar. Nine. So this GPS has been used in this area uh, kind of recently, so that's going to have all the information already. So that is a bit quicker. Ten. So 10 satellites after 2 minutes, that's actually on oh no, 11 now. Well, that's cool. That'll do for that one. And we'll swap to the NEO M9N. Old school. And power up the board. These uh, big aerial M9Ns usually pick up satellites very quickly when I'm out in the field. Four after a minute. Let's see what we end up with with two minutes. Oh, I've got eight already. Eleven. It's a little bit quicker than the others, I think. Go to two minutes and see what we end up with. Then I'll retry the M10Q now that it has uh, done a complete cold start. Two minutes eleven. All right. Very good. All right. I shall zero the timer. Power up the board. Ten satellites within what's that? Ten seconds or so. So there you go. That's pretty good. Up to eleven now. After a minute, after a minute, twelve. Cooking with gas now. So we're coming up to five minutes, and it seems to have settled on twelve satellites. That might be the limit of what we can get here. Up eleven and twelve. There we go. There's five minutes. So let's call it twelve satellites where we're situated with the GPS in the car, but uh, a capable little. GPS sensor for use on fixed wing with INAV or Argypilot. Yep, I would recommend it. Uh, nice little unit. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.